Yeah, well, I thought I was going to be done until Sunday morning. No. I get up this morning and my clock went from six and a half hours to 11 hours. So guess what? I'm driving today. And it is raining like crazy. But it's all good. All right, folks, we almost to Waco here. I'm trying to get caught back up with that Tesla truck, but it ain't, it ain't letting me catch it. But anyhow, it is what it is. I wasn't quick enough on the the record to get it when it, I got a picture of it, but when I went to to start recording, I couldn't get it. Welcome to Waco. Yes, sir, we made it to Waco with no hiccups. So that's not too bad. I've been playing leapfrog with this pick em up truck right here in front of me with them two motorcycles for the last 30 miles. I'll pass him and he'll pass me. I'll pass him and he passes me. Well, I guess I'm passing him again. But I got about three miles before I got to get off, so I, uh, I need to uh, get on past these people and get over. Come on. Jeez. I don't know if I'm making My exit's coming up. I got, well, there's 330B. I got to get to 330A. I'm all the way over in the third lane. And, uh, yes, I am clear. So, we made it. So, we've got to get off at the right exit. I thought I was going to have to pass it and work my way back to it. So we made it off that exit. It was, a. Uh, I'd have got it on camera, but yeah, I had to pay a little better attention. There's a lot of traffic there. But here we are. Passing Tractor Supply Distribution Center. Like I said before, CFI's got this all wrapped up. Look, CFI, CFI, CFI. There's a couple other companies in there, but CFI's got the majority of it. No, that's cool. They putting in a, a a fuel stop here, right at the corner of Bagby and Corporation. Yeah, they putting in a fuel stop. That's good. We need it right here. I thought when they put Amazon in across the street there, that's what they was doing it. when they first started clearing. I thought they was putting in a fuel stop or a truck stop there, but no big Amazon warehouse but this is definitely a fuel stop they got regular gas pumps in the front and they got a, a four bay fuel station on the back side I can't tell you looks like it might be a Texaco or something like that fuel stop it ain't gonna be like a, a pilot or nothing like that it's gonna be like a Texaco or something I think it might Hell, it might be a small pilot. The way the building looks, it might be a pilot. I don't know. They ain't got no markings on it yet. Yeah, I got over in that left lane because that's where I need to be at. But, uh, yeah, we got something going on up here. Got the left lane blocked. Got this uh, crew there doing nothing, hanging out and collecting. And he, none of them working. They all standing there talking. Oh boy, oh boy, this ain't good. So you got one, two, three, plus the one in front of me, four. Jeez, everybody come in one day to get their loads? Everybody. <laughs> Uh, you know, I ain't had, since they put this new lane, this, this new lane right here, sitting out here on the highway, has only been here about 
I don't know, a couple months, two, three months. And this is the first time I've had to sit out here and wait since they put this new lane in. Because this, this don't generally happen. They must be training a new guard up there or something. No? No, evidently that one truck, he's... The bobtail don't know what he's getting, evidently. I don't know. That yard jockey right there pulling that prime trailer just pulled right in front of that bus. I mean, literally, right? That bus had to lock down the brakes. Not that one there, the one in front of him. That bus had to lock down the brakes to keep from hitting it. And yet you don't need a CDL to drive a yard jockey. And they coming out of the yards here, out on the roads, and... I mean, yeah, granted, they're only going up here and then right over... But still, that's... That's crazy. Well, we made it into the yard. That didn't take too long. Well, about 15 minutes or so. No, we good. All them trucks coming in are live unloads. So you didn't have to do all that inspecting and everything so it didn't take too long. I don't know what this guy's doing. Well, maybe he's turning around. I don't know. I got the camera on a little late here. He was... <laughs> uh, no, maybe he's backing in. I don't know what he's doing, but he... He's been at it now for about five minutes. He was backing up, pulling forward, backing up, pulling forward, backing up, pulling forward, just to turn up into there. Now I don't know what he's doing. All right, I was giving him the benefit of the doubt, and now I don't know what he's doing. And I can't get around them because of that other truck that's backed in there. I don't think I got room. That guy's got his hood open, so I don't think I got room to get through there to get around them. So I, I don't know what the hell is going on here. I can't drop my, you know, if I could, I would drop my empty right here, but this is the loaded line. You can't drop empties on this line right here. This is the loaded line, or I would drop my empty right here on the left, and then I'd be able to get around them, but I can't. What are you going for? I'm going to try to squeeze through here, because he's just sitting still there. got this other truck I don't know what he's doing well we got a <laughs> we got a cluster back here today good God oh yes sir I'm fixing to take this easy spot where all I got to do is pull forward and back straight in oh I'm gonna do the lazy truck driver way and here we go backing in let me get the trailer straightened out here. Well, I'll show y'all once you get it straight. I see a lot of guys out there doing this number, back and forth, doing all this. You don't have to do that. Once you get it straight and get it lined to where you want to go, it just goes. And you don't have to make big moves, little moves. Little turns does a lot when you're backing up. And I am in the hole. That's him. All right, we are disconnected. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to take a Cause they every once in a while they do put loaded trailers back here so i'm gonna take a quick trip through here just to make sure but i think that one right there in the middle against the wall is my trailer that looks like our old trailer but i'm not 100 percent sure that's not it there yep Nope, that's number 16. That's not mine. Mine's number 15. 
But that says 16 too. That's not it. Huh. Well, it's right here somewhere, I'm sure. Yeah, see right there. See this one right here? Got a green light on, that's a loaded trailer. So I'm saying, so you can't always just assume that these are empties back here, because they do put loads back here. And now I'm back around here waiting on him. What a deal. I would have thought by now, by the time I done went back there, dropped my trailer, drove the back lot and looked for my loaded trailer, I would have thought by now he would be in the hole. Good thing I don't get paid for thinking. Well, here's my trailer right next to this Martin truck. And he got his door wide open. This ain't good. Yeah, this Martin still ain't hooked and moved yet. There ain't enough room here with him sitting there to swing out. I might have to go back there towards the back and then come back to the front. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna sit here a minute. I gotta let the air build up on the trailer so I can slide the axles. <coughs> I'm gonna slide my axles because they're all the way at the back. I'm gonna slide them forward first and see what I can do before I go all the way to the back again. All right, I got, yeah, got the axle slid. Got my radio hooked up in here. The radio to come up, that it come with the truck. The whole damn, uh, Display done went out. Right there were, you know, on these new Cobras, they got the, the digital display, you know. Well, that whole display done went out. I mean, I could still hear and everything, but I couldn't, couldn't see nothing. So I went ahead and put my radio in here. Let's see how it does. Which is the same Cobra, but I had a, I had them put a Connex board and all that in this one, so we'll see how it goes. Boy, it's a shame. For 10 minutes now, I've been trying to get a radio check, and ain't nobody answered. Are you serious right now? <laughs> Good God, people, what is wrong? Why, why is no... I can understand if somebody's doing it all day, all day, all day, and you just, but, oh, come on. Well, anyhow, let's head to the truck stop and weigh this wagon and see, and see how much I got to move it. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Somebody answered and said the radio sounded bad. I don't know, it's got some, I didn't have that antenna warning with the other radio. But if I hook mine up and now I got an antenna warning, and they say the radio sounds bad. I don't know. I might just put the other radio back in there and just deal with it. I know it's on 19 and I, although I can't see the display, as long as I can hear it, I guess I'm okay. Yeah, I think I'll just take mine out. I don't want to burn the finals up or whatever in my radio because of something to do with the stock antenna and coax in this truck. So, yeah, I'll just pull. I'm going to pull my radio back out. I'll put, yeah, I'll put the other one back in here. It, it might not have no display, but it's still talked. And this one here, I'm having a problem getting somebody to answer So, yeah, I'm going to go back to the other one. I know where they're putting that new store in, but it still don't say what it's going to be. 
I mean, they got two diesel lanes there. Yep. All the way from the yard over there, over here to the pilot, which is about three, four miles. And now I'm right across the street from the pilot and still can't get a check on my radio. I had one person check it a minute ago and he said it sounded like crap, so I tried to tune it and ask him again and then no answer. So, yep, I'll just go back to the old radio. Hell, I don't talk on it that much anyway, so it don't really matter. Yep, we all know the routine here. Pull in the back row here to get around to the scale. And look at here. Last time I was in here, the same truck was sitting in the same spot. I drove that truck there for about four months while I was waiting on this one to get ready. It didn't have all that paint peeling on it like it does now. But, yeah. I don't know why he's... I don't get it. Anyhow, here we are pulling up on the scale. Let's see what she weighs. I have to climb my fat ass. All right, now let's see how to get out of here and get back around. I got to turn around and get her, you know. This is gonna be the fun part. Let's see how many people I piss off doing this. Well, nobody cussing yet. I thought he was fixing to walk in front of me. <laughs> that would not have been good. That's what I got, folks. I ain't had one in a couple days, and then I feel it's about time for a Red Bull. That's right, Red Bull time. And I scaled my load. It come out almost perfect. I mean, yeah, I'd have much rather had 33 on the drives instead of on the trailer, but I don't have to move nothing. So let's get out of this truck stop and do some trucking up. I got five hours and 20 minutes left on the clock. I ain't gonna go that far. I'm probably gonna go about Tyler. When I get to Tyler, I like staying there at the, the TA Express. They got decent food there. So yeah, I got to do it 34, so I may as well do it there. So we'll see how long it takes to get there. Hey, here we are. We're coming into Carl's Corner. Right here at that Pedro. Yes. Some of you out there know this, but uh, I think I said this on one of my other videos. That used to be uh, Willie's Place. Owned by Willie Nelson. And back then, that place was hopping. I didn't ever get a chance to go to it back then. And, uh, but they got pictures of it. And from, I've talked to other people that, that's been been in there when it used to be Willie's Place. And they said every weekend they'd be live bands there. And yeah, they'd have a good old time going in there. Now, you're lucky to even get something to eat when you go in there. Well, I made it through Dallas. <laughs> it wasn't too bad because, uh, yeah, I'm coming up 35E to 20. I mean, right there when you get on the 20 is normal, yeah. It's hit and miss, you know, sometimes there's traffic, sometimes the, sometimes not, you know, depending on the time of day. Right now it is 10 after two central time. So it ain't too bad. Now, two hours from now, jeez, yeah. Be catching hell getting on, on the 20 off of 35. But right now it ain't too bad. Hey, look at that unit so over there. Yes, answer. sir. My goodbyes, too. Well, I done passed where I wanted to. <laughs> yeah.
I was going to stop back there at the New Pilot at the 540. And that's where I was going to do my 34. And I'm off in another world, just trucking up, not paying no attention. The next thing I know, here I am, look, I'm at the 560. I'm like, well, geez, I drove right on past it. <laughs> What a deal. Yeah, well, that's life. Guess I'll go up here to the, oh shit, that TA Express. Oh, shit, I don't know what the hell's going on. I in the middle of nowhere and we're down to 40 miles an hour. Seriously? What's the deal? Oh, okay, we got oversized up here. That explains it. He must be real heavy. Yeah, that's a heavy load. It ain't that it's oversized, it's overweight. See all them extra axles? So yeah. I need that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven trailer axles and Plus the three, yeah, that's overweight. That's a load there, boys. Yeah, westbound 20 is backed up right here. I'm at the 580. The 580 mile marker, and there's there was no accident, there was nothing. But traffic sure is backed up going west. It ain't backed up going east, but it is backed up going west. I just don't understand. There was nothing there. Huh. But that's what happens. All it takes is one person. You know, one person to slow down and hit the brakes and go slow when you got a bunch of traffic like it does out here in Texas. One person to slow down. And that's all it takes. Cause then that person behind them is gonna slow down and then, you know, it's just a chain reaction. And before you know it, you got a traffic jam. All right, folks. Here we are. Pulling off back to here is where I'm gonna uh, in the night, I gotta look at my summary. If I got, if I got 12 hours left on my clock, then I'll just run it out tomorrow. But if I got anything less than that, then uh, this is where I'm gonna do my 34. So right now, from here, it is 683 miles for me to drop my load. So that's only. Ten and a half hours driving. I'm allowed eleven hours driving, but the reason I need twelve hours that's so I'll have time to show my pre-trip and and everything. Because if you don't have at least twelve hours, you won't have enough time to show your pre-trip and take your breaks and all that. Now let's get in here. Coming up here. It was pretty nice. Right there. Look at that. Flat top peak. Yes, sir. Everybody knows I like to stay in the back of truck stops, but since I'm doing a 34, I don't want to be all the way in the back, so I'm going to go around here. And uh, get one of these spots is closer to the front, but somewhere that I don't think I'm gonna get run over. So let's see here. Yeah, one of these spots here will work. Oh, look at that unit there. Yes, sir. 
Check out that unit. Yeah, that's another good looking truck. And there's another one. That's a dream truck there. W9 Studio Sleeper. Oh yeah, buddy. Here comes that one unit. Here we go. Check it out. There it is. Yes, sir. That's one fine ass truck. I love that color. That color blue. Yeah. Yeah, here comes that Kenworth. Yes, sir. And there it comes. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about right there. Now, see, folks, I get a lot of Peterbilts on here, but... Oh, snap. He's been the back in here beside me. Yeah, he changed his mind from being over here, and he pulled in over there. But that's all right. I still get a shot of it. That's one fine truck. That's my dream truck right there, boys and girls. See, everybody wants a Peterbilt. That's what I want. Right there. All right, boys and girls. Them other trucks weren't nothing. Check this one out. Jeez. This is what I'm talking about. I wouldn't want to live in it. But I sure would love to show it. Yeah. Even got gold. Gold flake. Yeah, look at this. Stainless steel trailer matching. Matching reefer unit. Flat top. Look at them big old stacks. How many lights he got on top? Jeez. He's got a bunch of lights. Then again, like I said, the gold leaf. I'll check this out. That's what dream trucks are made of right there. Not my dream, but most people's dreams. I couldn't live in that. I'm too tall, too big. And a stainless steel spread axle trailer with matching fenders. Look at that. Look at the lights. You got the lights under there. Both axles and along the rail. All right, that's it for today's part of the video. Now on to tomorrow. Uh, yay, good morning to me. It is raining again. Well, here we go, folks. Let's pull up here to the pumps. Where I can run inside and get something to drink. And get on down the road. Oh, great. Something's wrong with the trailer, too, because they got the orange light on the trailer, so... That means there's something wrong with the reefer unit. What a deal. So now I got to figure that out. Let's go. Right here. Yeah, this spot works as good as any. No matter where I go, I'm gonna get wet going in here, so. I'm trying to get the trailer under the awning so I can go see what's wrong with it. Hi, folks. Let's go play in some rain. See what kind of trouble we can get into this morning. Hopefully none. But, jeez. If I know this was gonna happen and I mysteriously gain hours overnight, then uh, I probably would have went a little further yesterday. But, oh well, 
It is what it is. I'll make it all the way into Atlanta today. Get this load off and then I'll do my 34. Yeah, look at that unit. All right, here we are getting ready to get on the big road. And Lord, I didn't want to do this today. I wanted to kill today. Especially now that it's raining. Gee. Ah. Oh well. Turn left on Highway 42 West Access. Why the hell is my Exit GPS left. trying to take me west to go east? Does it not know there's a ramp here? Oh, anyhow. Here we go. Truck it up! Boop, boop. Well, you know. I've been wanting to get my truck washed for the last couple of days. But this ain't the kind of washing I was hoping for. But y'all hear that? That rain is coming down. Lord. Yeah, buddy. That's all right, though. I looked at the radar. Yeah, I might have about 20 miles of rain this morning, and then I'll be out of it. It is coming. It is going east, but it just now hit the area where I'm at. Oh, yeah. Seven miles into this morning. And, uh... It ain't gone yet, but I'm going to stay optimistic. I'm going to say within 20 miles, I should be out of it. That's what I'm hoping. These are already starting to lighten up. Hell yeah, I'm getting to the edge of it. That's all good. <coughs> but then again, my luck could come in play, you know. It could be raining pussy, I get hit between the eyes with a dick, so we know how. <laughs> That's some bad luck, and I got some bad luck. Well, I'm at the 20 mile mark for today so far, and uh, yeah, I ain't going through the rain yet. But that's all right. <laughs> still thinking I'll come out over here soon. Early. That's what I'm hoping. If I read them, uh, the radar right. And the worst part of it was right in the east side of the storm. So, yeah, it's starting to get a little harder and a little worse. So maybe I am at the edge of it, but I don't know. We'll see you here shortly. Oh my god, now my window done fogged up. Between my window fogging up in the rain, I don't know what's worse. Y'all can see? You can't see right now. And all I done was turn my defrost on and it turned my windshield into a mess. Yeah, I got some paper towels and I cleaned the spot off for me to see through, but... rest of the window, you can't see nothing. Welcome to Louisiana. And yes, it is still raining 50 miles into this morning. So, boy, it was I way off on my guess on how far it would go. But, oh well. It's all good. And I got the green light for the scale. So that was even better. Yeah, we gotta get over here. We, uh, well, I still got about five, six miles. So I got plenty of time, but yeah, this is where you gotta definitely Make sure you are taking the bypass because now they are ticketing 
commercial trucks for going through. They're saying that you cannot fit across the bridge, and so I guess that will cause a major cluster. I don't know. I know when I went through there, I, I barely fit through the bridge, but that was back when they first started it. It might be a little worse now. All right, here we are getting on the 220 bypass this morning. Yeah, I need to be over in this lane. And, uh, yeah, I've slowed it way down for this overpass. It is wet. It ain't that cold, 60 degrees, 59. But, don't want to take no chances. I'll slow it down, no problem. I ain't in that big a hurry. I get to the other side of 220 right there at uh, Halton, Louisiana. I gotta stop and get fuel. I don't know, I may I may just get fuel in Monroe. I think I got I got a quarter of change. I should have enough to get to Monroe. Oh yeah. Continue on that. Get fuel and shower and everything at the same time. And then go from there on into delivery. There we are crossing over the bridge uh, here on 220. And yeah, it's still raining. Oh, I was way off on my estimate. I'm 63 miles in. And you know, that radar didn't show the band of rain that I, that I was in. Didn't even reach Louisiana. So I, I don't know. Maybe that radar's a little behind. Holy hell. This truck just come across the median from the westbound side and is in the ditch on the eastbound side and part of his trailer was out in the road. Oh Lord, I, I was looking at the cops. They was coming west. They ain't nobody got there yet. And uh, if I had enough, oh Lord, that, yeah, see now the cops are coming. Here comes another cop. That just happened. My God, just scared them. Yeah, that's going to be a mess. And he was laying on the driver's side up in the trees. And the trailer, like I said, the trailer was up on the road. I mean, I just barely missed the backside of his trailer. If I didn't notice the the lights I would have never seen it because uh, the way he was flipped the bottom side the bottom side of the truck the trailer what I noticed was the wheels was the, the wheels were rolling and then I had to jerk it over to the left lane to, thank god nobody was beside me and I decided to go ahead and stop here and get fuel. But man, I'm still, yeah, that, that's got me shook. I was just almost in a mess. That would have hurt. All right, I got fuel. Got a Red Bull and got my nerves calmed down from that wreck that I was almost in. Let's <coughs> go on and get up out of here. But I got to keep it under four miles an hour for now because I'm trying to save time because I need every bit of the time I got to get 
to where I'm going today. So I got to save what I can, how I can. So as long as I keep it under five miles an hour, it won't kick me into driving. And then I can do what I got to do today. And I got a few new subscribers overnight. Thanks to all the new subscribers. If you don't mind, spread the word about my channel, please. Thanks for all the new subscribers. Well, there's ambulance from the accident. T's and P's. That's right, T's and P's for that driver. Hopefully everything's okay. T's and P's for those of y'all don't know is thoughts and prayers. So hopefully he's okay because it was laying on the driver's side of the truck. Yeah, folks. That still got me a little shook that back there. I mean, if I'd have just been over, let's just say, like right here in the lane, I'd have been involved in an accident. Luckily, I was. Luckily, I was on this side of the lane. That's just how. Uh, close I come to be in in that accident. So you know I'm gonna cut the video here today. And uh yeah it's a little shorter than my normal videos but I'm going to cut it here today. Hope everybody has a good, good day. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. And again, thanks for watching. TTVE.